This is Everything Guitar. Good morning, Vietnam! Well, all right, it's not Vietnam, but uh, it's uh, more like London. So I'm going to keep working on the Les Paul. The one that I've been calling a Chibson, but basically it's, yes, it's a Harley Benton. You know, if you want to play authentic, then, um, you know, obviously you play a Harley Benton. Uh, because uh, obviously the history with Les Paul and Harley Benton goes back a long way. So part of the next stage of the customization, I'm now onto the rewiring. I thought what I'd do is order a couple of these kits because if you're not that experienced and you don't want to go around shopping at component places, you can buy an entire kit. <clears throat> So you get your, you know, this is obviously a Les Paul kit. So you get your volume pots, 500k, there's four of those. Guitarists tend to like these great big looking capacitors, the orange drop capacitors. Um, so you get, yes, you get the, so you get four, four volume pots. You get your jack socket. So you've got your two capacitors. Now these are 223 capacitors and these are not so deep cutting so you can use these more you know if you just it's not going to roll off a lot so I mean I've always preferred deeper cutting capacitors. I've always gone for something like 333 all the way up to 47s. Um, so these are the 223 and in here I've got another set of these from, this is from Iron Gear, which I bought these from axtech.co.uk. And it comes with a diagram. Um, you know, it's up to you how you wire them, and I was going to talk a little bit about this in a minute. So you get these diagrams. And then you've got your switch. I'm really not a fan of these type of switches. I prefer the block with the, um, the three, the three um, lugs at the top. But anyway, these are more kind of Gibson-like, and obviously gold. It's quite, you know, gold, gold probably plated something. And then you get your wires. So in a set, you know, it saves you trying to look through you know your specs in terms of wires and the rest of it so it's quite a quick way of doing it now I want to try and do this when it comes to the wiring I've done a lot of wiring and I like to do it fast so actually ordering in a kit it's a good idea Iron Gear are a pretty good company you know they make good stuff uh, I kind of trust them um, they even give you a little bit of solder I mean, I've got tons of solder, so I'm sure that's, hopefully that's good stuff. I'm sure it is from them. Your consideration when ordering a Les Paul kit, the main difference, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're putting single coils, I mean, these are single coils. It doesn't matter whether you're putting single coils or humbuckers. You're usually putting 500k pots on, on these sort of things, in a Gibson anyway, in a Les Paul. Gibson, Gibson sort of Les Paul thing. So you're always going to have 500k pots. I'm not sure that the Gibson ever used 250k pots. There is a way of um, putting 250k pots, I think, on the tone pot. I've seen some diagrams and they're talking about this is when you start messing about with um, loading, ohm loading, and all this. But your, your safest bet is just to go all 500s. Um, there are some tonal variations with pots, but uh, generally I'm sticking with the 500s. I don't want trouble and I don't want experimentation on this sort of quick job. So yeah, so these are the 223s. My mind's not made up whether I'm going to put the 223s on for single calls because 
I'm kind of edging towards four sevens uh, because they're deeper cutting and obviously single calls being quite bright. There's going to be some bearing on the circuit, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, that's that kit. That's the, the 223 kit. So the main difference between the, the, the kits for the Les Pauls that you get from Axtec. That's the one, anyway. Now the other one is exactly the same as the one I just showed you, except it's unboxing and un unpackaging. That's my receipt. Okay, so this set is exactly like the other set, with one exception. These ones are the four seven. They say four seven three. You've got to have good eyesight to see that. So again, uh, four, four pots, one switch, one jack socket, some solder, wires for idiots, and the capacitors this time are 473, deeper cutting. And of course you get a diagram. Now when it comes to deciding what you're going to put in your guitar. I know some of you might just be saying, oh well, you know, you've got 473 capacitor or a 223, how are you going to make up your mind? I mean, obviously this is going to be down to how you're going to be using the guitar. Now, I expect, if you're thinking about single coil guitars, I pretty much expect that some of you will say, right, well, all right, these are bright sounding pickups, you know, and you might just go with whatever the wiring diagrams tell you, you know. But there are different ways of wiring up a guitar, and I thought I'd mention the different ways of doing it. There's Les Paul Modern, which is the way, you know, they do it these days. There's Les Paul, the kind of 50s, there are um, drawbacks and there are advantages of how you how you choose these circuit diagrams. You know, so you, you can you can either go with the vintage way of doing it or the modern way of doing it. But that's not the only way of doing it. You may be reading that if you wire it up a particular way, some people say, well, you don't get, you know, I mean, like here, they've got the pickup. It's going into the volume and then the output is also from the same lug going into the middle lug here and then they're connecting the capacitor and you'll have to solder it directly onto the pot. Uh, I don't like that way of doing it. Um, you're, you're asking for trouble in my opinion uh, what wiring a capacitor onto a, the back of a volume pot. Um, so there are other ways of connecting the capacitor between the, the volume pot and the tone pot. And then something still has to go to earth, so it's still being filtered, so this is, this is filtering to earth there. there. There are other ways of wiring the lugs you can wire one of the lugs to the back of the pot, so in other words, you've got your ground, but the filtering happens between the volume pot and the tone pot. So you've got these other ways of doing it. One of your other considerations is, if you say, you may read, oh, well, if you do it one way, you get a volume drop when you turn your tone pot down. And then there's, you may find that some people say the tone pot is too aggressive, you know, it, it rolls off the tone too quickly. So one of the things what you do is you, you decide you're going to do the modern wiring or the vintage wiring. Now, as I seem to recall the vintage wiring, you get the volume drop. And then with the modern wiring, you don't get that, that kind of volume drop. Uh, so, you, you know, the guitar acts in a more, much more stable way when you're using the pots. 
Um, generally, stability is good. You know, you want predictability, stability. But let's say your problem is that you are rolling down your tone pot and let's face it, I know there's a lot of guitarists who don't use the tone pot, but I think it's a really essential way of operating the guitar because you want to be able to control the highs sometimes. I mean, unless you're going for that Brian May treble boosted sound, you know, um, but that's another way of driving an amp or driving an effects pedal. That's one way around of doing it, but sometimes you do need some tone and contrast. So you can introduce a treble bleed. Uh, so between the volume pot, uh, between you know the input and the output, you can simply wire a capacitor between the two, and uh, the value of the capacitor will you know be an O O one capacitor. And then you can have a, an O2 capacitor. Or you can make it switchable. Put a little toggle switch between the two or use a pot with a switch. I'm not going to bother for this sort of guitar uh, for the moment. I always consider putting in treble bleed, but these are going to be quite trebly. So I may not bother with the treble bleed. Some guitars I do use that on. I've used treble bleed on Telecasters because obviously you want that sometimes with the bridge pickup especially you want you know to retain your highs but equally I on my Jeff Beck Strat I really like the way you can roll the tone off especially on the bridge pickup so there are different ways of doing it, it depends what you're going to do with the guitar so there's treble bleed is your other way of doing it so then you can add a treble bleed to a more traditional type circuit or you can add a treble bleed to a more modern wiring type circuit it's just it's going to be the swings and roundabouts of what you're trying to get tonally. So those this is the iron gear system, so and then the soldering work is going to start next. So I just thought I'd do a quick update on this and hope uh, for some of you that it's kind of interesting and worthwhile watching this and I hope picking up some ideas. All right, I'll see you all soon. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you want to see more performance-based content from me, then head over to my main performance channel, the Dale Harris Guitar Channel, and it's in the card right now in the right-hand corner. And you know the saying, those that can, do, and I should leave out the other bit that says those that can't talk about it. So if this video has helped you, then why not subscribe? And why not check out some of our other videos? And there are two here to check out for you now. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better guitarist by subscribing to the channel. All the best, hasta luego.